Humans in the environment come into close contact each and every day. Whether it's a songbird, a blade of grass, or a ray of sunshine in the cool spring air, you can't break the bond. Over time, the connection has remained the same, but how it is perceived has gradually changed. This shift in understanding can be seen in the small town of Freehold Borough, New Jersey. Freehold Borough has a longer history than the very nation it resides in. For an environmental historian interested in the complex interworkings of the past, it's the place to be. Freehold dates back to the late 1600s as early Dutch and Scottish settlers came into the area. Upon arrival, they found Native American paths along the present County Route 537 that runs right through town along Main Street. The Declaration of Independence was read during the American Revolution at the foot of the old courthouse, which is now the site of the Hall of Records. The single largest land battle in the American Revolution, the Battle of Monmouth, started as shots rang out where the high school stands today. This town deeply cares about the country it represents. But still, after all these historical feats, the biggest underlying historical importance of Friel Borough can be found in its past agricultural epicenter. The most vital part of that farming industry in Freehold was the railroad. After the implementation of a line through the center of Freehold in 1852, railroads helped to bring goods in and out of Freehold and Monmouth County to support the large population booms across the tri-state area. The two primary lines that run through Freehold are the Freehold-Jamesburg line that runs west to Trenton and the Pennsylvania line that leads north to Matawan and eventually New York City. Both did have some use for commuting passengers, but primarily, their heydays were spent hauling the products of the surrounding farmland to market. The main crop to move was the potato, but the town and surrounding area also grew plenty of asparagus, cucumbers, lima beans, rhubarb, eggs, apples, hay, and corn for grain. We are the garden state after all. The potato was so abundant that Monmouth County was hailed as the biggest potato growing county in the country. As of 1925, the production of white potatoes was valued at over $2 million, roughly $34 million today adjusted for inflation. Monmouth County also boasted 172,000 acres in 1925 to grow this large of a crop. It is said that at one time, you could drive from Freehold to Trenton and see nothing but potato fields. The reason the potatoes grew so well was due to the sand loam soil that suited its growing needs. Freehold was so obsessed with the things that our town parade even had a potato queen. The scenery was once much different around Main Street. This parking lot was once a market yard, filled with potatoes, stables, and barns instead of cars and trucks. Freehold was the best public market in the state, sending out about 75 railroad cars of perishables a day. As the epicenter of the county's agricultural market, a county fair was established in 1882, which has run annually ever since. Over time, railroad infrastructure grew throughout the state and in Monmouth County. In 1910, the Pennsylvania Railroad had built its lines under the Hudson, connecting commuters from New Jersey to New York City even faster. Rail service in the county soon reached its zenith in 1929. This dependable rail service began the transformation of the county from a tourist destination and farmland into a desirable place to live. Traces of the influence of railroads on the town can still be seen today. Over on the corner of Jackson and Mechanic Street is the remnants of the Freehold Passenger Depot, which was originally built in 1896. Although the railroad lines have since been abandoned, the shell of the old rug mill in the background and the old stations still stand as reminders of an industrial past. The rug mill in the small town of Freehold was actually able to contribute products for the United States Supreme Court and Radio City Music Hall. The closing of the rug mill in the 1960s was one of the many fallouts that occurred as railroads saw such a decline in their use. Many more pieces of historical and technological change tie into why the railroads are nowhere near as prevalent as they were in our past. The creation of bigger and better superhighways in the 1950s, including the Turnpike, the Parkway, and locally Route 9, sped up bus and automobile travel time from Monmouth County to New York City. Many of the veterans returning from World War II were taking advantage of the GI Bill to purchase mortgages on their homes and finance their educations. This increase in a post-war population ready to secure their American dream began the modern suburban sprawl. The new automobile prosperity hurt the summer rail excursion services to the beachfronts and resulted in some of the lines losing their passenger service. 
By the end of the 1960s, the railroads were reduced in importance as a mover of people and goods nationwide. Many lines began to consolidate and reroute into the larger station stops we see presently. By 1976, all of the previous major railroads in New Jersey ceased to exist and became the Consolidated Railroad Corporation. Shortly after, the agriculture of the state, specifically the namesake potato farms, suffered the same fate as the railroads. By the mid-1970s, almost all potato fields in Monmouth County were gone. The last disappeared in the mid-1990s, marking a transition from a 1925 Monmouth County that boasted over 172,000 acres, to 15,000 acres by the middle of the 20th century, to 7 acres in the 1990s, and soon after, zero. To this day, the old paths of the train can still be seen in the county's bike trails, even if the iron rail lines have been removed. From above, with the help of geographic information systems, we can see the framework of current farmland preservation areas and the rail lines of Monmouth County. The smaller circular outline is Freehold Borough, and you can see the Freehold Jamesburg running straight through it, as well as multiple farms still following its path. The Freehold station and platform have not seen passenger service for years. However, the local freight does a round trip once a week to service a few lumber companies still using the rail service. When you hear the horn blow, it echoes down along the empty tracks, reminding us what the town used to be. Although the town has since lost its agricultural namesake, and the railroads do not serve anywhere near as many passengers or as large of an industry, it still has the lyrics of Bruce Springsteen to articulate the rich value and pride held within the native freeholders. Housing developments have sprung up, shopping centers and other industries have moved into the surrounding area, but everyone who passes through downtown Freehold today follows a path well-worn by three centuries of traffic, three centuries of history. Environmental history allows us to look back in time through a lens of curiosity. This field aims to better understand the complex relationships among the people, the culture, and the environmental resources surrounding the two. Throughout the past, both in Freehold Borough and around the globe, the relationships between the social and the natural have been complex. Because they will continue to be difficult to understand for many more years, it is vital that we look deeper into the ecosystem both around us and within us. In our ever-growing world, there are more and more innovators entrepreneurs, and inspired activists. If we can find a way to channel even a little bit of each of those personalities in our day-to-day -day activities, we can begin to change our local communities and the world at large. Often, it's hard to find the inspiration to make a change. Sometimes it's easy to feel as if you, as one single person, cannot make a difference. With the help of the ideals set forth in environmental history, that curiosity, that interest in how things really work, and a little bit of wind at your back, you really can achieve anything you set your mind to. Your hometown and our home planet depends on it. All it takes is one first step to make a change.